Hi guys, and welcome back to another portrait retouching tutorial. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how you can create and retain freckles when enhancing and smoothing the skin in Photoshop. And I'm gonna start right now. What is up guys, Photo Fever here and welcome back to the channel. So when you go ahead and smooth and retouch skin, I find that a lot of tutorials out there lose a lot of the freckles and sometimes you actually want to retain that to keep more of the natural beauty of the model. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can retain the freckles but also create freckles in Photoshop so to make more of a natural look. So with that out of the way guys, Let's get started. Right guys, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually retain and try and create some freckles in a photo that I've already started editing. So I'll go ahead and open up this photo here. And as you can see, I've already created quite a lot of skin smoothing effects to this photo. And as you can see, I have lost quite a lot of the freckles. There are a few still there, but because of the way that I edit, sometimes the freckles can get lost. And I find quite a few tutorials out there often do this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can create freckles using just a simple adjustment layer in Photoshop. And I'm also gonna show you how you can try and retain as much as possible by using a special blending mode. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna actually create some freckles. Now I find that is one of the best ways is using a scatter brush. Because I find if you're trying to add in freckles manually, I find that it looks a little bit too patterny. So if you go ahead and use a scatter brush, I find that's the best way of doing it, simply because of how scatter brushes work is they're completely random. And you can obviously remove and add them depending on where you want them falling on the face. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to our adjustment layers icon first. And we're gonna go ahead and firstly choose the curves adjustment layer. And what I want to do is overall just darken the photo. So I'm gonna take the mid-tones and I'm gonna go ahead and just take them downwards. So I'm gonna create an effect that looks similar to this, lovely. So once you've done that, what we're gonna do is now invert this particular layer mask. So with a, a, a layer that you've got here, you have a layer mask that created with every adjustment layer. So what you wanna do is choose that layer mask and press Command I, and that will invert that layer mask from black to white. Once you've done that, we can now add in the scatter brush effect. So what I'm gonna do is gonna go ahead over to the left-hand side and choose the brush tool. So you can choose it here. And then you want to go to your brush selection. Now in Photoshop, you have a bunch of free brushes. The brushes I would recommend using. So if you go into your special effect brushes, and we go down, you want to go to Kyle's splatter brushes here. And this I find works really well from applying naturally looking shaped freckles because not all freckles are the same size. And using a scatter brush works really, really nicely, again, for that random look. So what we're gonna do is turn off that, but we're gonna go up to our flow here, and we're gonna drop that down to around about 25 or 20%. And then we're gonna make our brushes around, for this photo, let's go for around 500 pixels. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure we're painting white to our layer mask. because so our layer mask is completely black, which is predominantly transparent, then what we're gonna do is add in our opacity look. So we're gonna add in our white here. And then what I'm gonna do is click and start adding in those freckles to the face. And you can click and hold, and because it's a scatter brush, it will add it in periodically and randomly through the area. And what I recommend doing is changing the size as much as possible to make them look as natural as possible. I would start with the bridge of the nose and then I would work underneath the eyes uh, and then I would work towards possibly the forehead. And again, guys, it really depends on how many freckles you would like to add to the photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a few more to the top. And of course, you can always turn, turn the flow down. So I'm gonna turn it down to 20% to add in just a few less freckles per click. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it in around uh, the head here and work around until you are happy with the amount of freckles on the face. Lovely, so once you've got to the point where you're happy with them, if you're finding them they're now either too dark or too bright, you can actually change them because we've used the curves adjustment layer. So we can go into our curves adjustment layer icon, and if you want to brighten or create less of a uh, contrast between the skin tone beneath it, 
you can go ahead and brighten those freckles. And as you can see, they're becoming less pronounced on the face. And if you go ahead and darken them, you can create a darker look and it creates more of a higher contrast between the skin tones and the freckles themselves. But I find a drop of an ever so slight amount works really nice. Adding in really subtle looks, especially when it comes to freckles and retaining them, works a lot better than creating a more drastic look. But again, it really does depend on what type of photo that you are working with. So once you've done that, what you want to do now is to create an ever so slight blur to each freckle. And I find the best way of doing this is creating an overall Gaussian blur effect. So what we're gonna do, instead of choosing the curves adjustment layer, we're gonna choose the curves adjustment layer layer mask. And if you want to have a look of where you've added each of the freckles, if you hold down Alt or Option on your computer, click on that layer mask, you can actually see how or where the freckles are falling on the face. And this is actually opening up your layer mask instead of opening up a photo. So you can go back and just select, make sure you've got your layer mask layer selected, and then you're gonna go up to filter, you're gonna to go to blur, and then you're gonna to go to Gaussian blur. And I would recommend adding in a pixel radius of between one and three. Really does depend on how blurry or how sharp you would like the freckles. So in this particular case, I'm gonna go for a pixel blur or a radius blur of 1.5. And I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. Lovely. So what happens if you want to retain a lot of the freckles that already exist on the face and you don't want to necessarily create a lot? Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use a special blending mode and a special adjustment layer. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to our bottom right hand corner adjustment layers icon, and then we're gonna go ahead and choose black and white. Now, what we want to do is to create a higher contrast between the skin tones and the freckles that are currently existing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go for the yellows, and we're gonna darken the yellows and keep the brightness of the reds intact. So we're gonna move them around until you are happy with the contrast between the skin tones and the freckles. The higher the contrast, the more pronounced the freckles will be in the end result. So I'm gonna move these around until I am happy with the distance between each one. So I'm gonna go for something that looks similar to this. So you can see the freckles are a little bit more of a high contrast, simply moving the red and yellow sliders. And then we're gonna go ahead and click off our properties. And what we're gonna do now is change the blending mode of this black and white layer to luminosity. So we're gonna to go to our blending mode options and we're gonna go ahead and drop that down to luminosity. And as you can see, the luminosity just changes the brightness. So it's changed it back into color, but it's now going to be affecting the brightness. So if we do the before and we do the after, as you can see, it's affected the brightness of the photo, not the color of the photo. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna open up our layer stylizing box. So we're gonna double click on that layer. And as you can see, our layer stylizing box opens. Once we're in that, we're gonna to go to our blending options and down below, we've got our blend if options. Now you've got two sliders here, ignore the top one. We're just going to affect the one called underlying layer. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that icon found on the right hand side in the highlight areas, and we're gonna drag that over to the left. And this will remove that particular effect from predominantly the highlight and midtones. And until you can see that most of the skin tones are still there, that is when you want to alt click or option click on that small thumbnail and you want to break it into two pieces. And this will create a gradient in between this effect appearing and disappearing depending on the brightness of the underlying layer. So we're gonna go ahead and move these apart until you are happy that it isn't affecting the skin tones. Because if you change the brightness of the skin tones, it's going to affect the look of the photo. We only want to affect the freckles. And because the freckles are darker, we can actually select a lower brightness than the overall skin tones, so it just affects the freckles of the photo. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move these apart until you are happier with the result. And we're gonna go ahead and click OK. And if we do the before and after, you can see that the freckles are ever so slightly been retained and the ones that we've created are a little bit more of a contrast between the skin tones. So if I show you, if I zoom out, if we do the before and we do the after, 
As you can see, we've created a subtle, but a genuine, really, I'm really happy with the look of creating and retaining the freckles in the face. And I must say, it looks really realistic because we've added in a subtle amount. And there we go, guys. If this video helped you out, make sure to give it a like and also subscribe for more tutorials just like this one. You can find my latest two minute tutorials just here and my latest videos just down here. But until next time, guys, keep creating.